Hey guys, welcome to Scottsdale Living, and it is the number one podcast in Scottsdale, so a little bit of a flex right there. Um, but today we got a really cool person here in the studio with me. I'm with Kirsten Steele from Chestnut, opening up a new location in the Biltmore yeah. in October, right? Absolutely. I'm so excited. first things first, you got to tell me about Benny's Burrito. So oh, I'm kind of yeah. excited about Benny's Burrito. Yeah. I haven't had it yet. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's really funny. It's actually a build your own burrito. So people uh-huh. love being able to put whatever they want into it oh, cool. and making it their own. Right. Um, a, lot, a lot of the time I'll go somewhere and get a burrito and it's there's like a few things that I don't want. So you're kind of totally. saying, hey, I don't want this or I want to add that. Yeah. And what's really funny is my husband is the one who asked me to put it on the menu. Menu, but <laughs> I and he eats it all the time. Right. But um, he, something on the menu is already named after him, sure. so I ended up naming it after our old um, cook who had been with us for about eight years, uh-huh. who was just really iconic and amazing. So, so Benny's got his own Benny's burrito. Right? His is his he still burrito. with here? Or no, he's not. Sadly, uh-huh. he had to go back to um, Mexico to take care of his family during sure. COVID. So sure. he's still down there. But it's so funny. I actually got, hopped on a call with him about mm-hmm. six months ago. And he was just like, I miss you guys, uh, but he's taking care of his family. So totally totally. so tell us a little bit about it. So you got the new location coming yeah. in, I think 24th and Camelback. Is that Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm super, super excited about it. Uh, 24th and Camelback in the Biltmore Center. Right. It's just across the street, uh, across 24th Street from Fashion Park Mall Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. in the base floor of mm-hmm. this um, commercial complex. I'm super, super stoked about it. The space is fantastic. The kitchen is amazing. Um, there's an attached conference room. So we'll sure. be doing a ton of catering. We're going to be delivering into that complex as well. And we're really happy to be sharing that space with um, Press Coffee that has a little location inside yeah. that courtyard as well. So they'll be our neighbors. So Chestnut's established though, right? So mm-hmm. you were in Arcadia for a while. Yep. I mean, how long have you has Chestnut been a brand? How long has it been out there? Yeah. So um, December 14th will be our 10-year wow, anniversary. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. So that's a long haul yeah, in the restaurant business, right? I know. Right? It's, and it's so guys. crazy just kind of bopping around the city. But we did open December 14th, two, or 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, on 44th and Camelback, which was literally insane. <laughs> um, I was not in the industry prior. Sure. I was six months well, pregnant. So you at the were time. never. You never were in the restaurant industry. No, I. This? I went to. So I'm from Illinois, from the Chicagoland mm-hmm. area. I went to University of Illinois. Got a degree in um, sociology and communications. Worked in marketing for a long time. That I, does not go with no, Benny's burrito. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> it does not go with Benny's burrito. Although I love food and I've always enjoyed food. My sister is actually the one who asked me. If I wanted to open a restaurant with oh, her. Oh, cool. And I said, okay, let's do it. And originally I was thinking, oh, maybe like a 1500 square foot cafe. Sure. I could still have my day job. Right, we could do right. this kind of fun little thing. How'd that work out? Uh, not <laughs> as planned. She was the one who actually spotted the property on 44th and Camelback and was like, we have to go here. And I was right. like, sure, this sounds great. Right. Um, and the space was 4,000 square feet. I mean, oh, this wow. is like a That's real, a yeah, right? it's a real restaurant. And, um, and what was really crazy is like, as soon as we signed our lease, Sam Fox signed his lease for the Henry six Sam. months. I know six months after we <laughs> opened flower child's flagship there yeah. opened then take 44 announced their opening buck and rider came in four years after yeah. we opened it was basically like we went into a space that wasn't was very underserved in terms of food and beverage and literally blew up right and so there was just a demand for us to reach that level totally. very very quickly right and uh, or we were gonna sink sure. right that's yeah. just kind of how the yeah, industry totally. works and i'm not a sinker <laughs> um, so just kind of push. So you're swimming hardcore, I was, well, right? Well, what's really funny is I was a competitive swimmer, so right. I was. Oh, cool. Hardcore. There you go. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was definitely something that really, you know, it was sink or swim. Sure. And swimming is the only option. So yeah, we absolutely. just kind of hustled and pulled it together. My sister actually is not part of the business anymore. It's just okay. me. But it's totally fine. But uh, we have a great relationship. Sure. She's just not a part of the business anymore. So, um, yeah, six and a half years on 44th and Camelback. Crazy. and. Moved down to 44th and Osborne. Um, we were there for about three years and mm-hmm. now we're moving locations again. So we're really excited Good about it. Good for you. Yeah. So do you find it hard when you change locations? Do you like to have to reinvent yourself kind of deal? Or? Absolutely. But I actually really think it's quite a benefit sure. because you can take those kinds of um, ideas and comments and concerns about your brand and what you're doing and really elevate. Yeah, it keeps you fresh, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So going from 44th and Camelback to 44th and Osborne was a huge step up for sure. us, right? And now now moving back into the Campbell or the Camelback corridor into the Biltmore area. 
I am so stoked to just elevate once again and like bring it. it. Yeah. So kind of walk me through, because I mean, the, the majority of restaurant owners I've talked to mm-hmm. are usually chefs, right? Yeah. So coming yeah. from a sociology background and, yeah. and not necessarily being a chef, how do you, how do you kind of overcome that as far as building the menu and, and bringing in the staff and the creativity that's involved yeah. in having a killer restaurant? Absolutely. So being somebody who doesn't have the experience that a lot of other people do in the industry, I have kind of an outside perspective, right? Sure. So my my approach is really, really different. I know a lot of restaurateurs and I think they're fantastic and mm-hmm. phenomenal. I just have a very different approach. Sure. So um, in terms of food, I get inspiration from traveling yeah. and places you go, right? Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite dish here? What's your favorite dish sure. there? My sister d- d- travels the globe. Um, mm-hmm. She is an international family, so she's all over the place. And just as an example, one of the menu items that we have is called the Granger, which is a deconstructed plate of poached eggs, kale, tomatoes, avocado, salmon. Wow. And um, this is the most popular dish at a restaurant called Granger in London. Oh, wow. How so cool. we brought that here, sure. called the Granger as right. a little homage to them. And, um, you so know, everybody's really saying hard. English food is just horrible. It's a little off on this yeah, one, Yeah, right? I know. A little <laughs> off. This is a, this is a really, really good and healthy dish. People sure. love it. And then they can kind of make it their own. If they don't like kale, they can substitute something else, sure. you know, that kind of stuff. But um, that's been a really huge part of the way that we build the menu. Mm-hmm. And in terms of building a team, I um, that's kind of like my superpower. Yeah, I, I love guess. It. <laughs> yeah. Like I, um, that's a really big focus. I've got two really big focuses when it comes to what I do. And that is building a very cohesive and team that sure. has a very comfortable space and a supportive space to come and work, but also building community. And right. those two things come one in the same, oh, yeah. right? I can't um, build a team and not build a community and I can't build a community and not a team. Yeah, of course. Because at the end of the day, it's all people and people need to be happy. And uh, my team needs to be hardworking and devoted to the people that we're serving. So so th- what's going on with staffing, right? Because I mean, I talk yeah. to business owners all the time mm-hmm. and it seems to be like one of the biggest, hardest things going on across the board. Absolutely. Have you run into that for the new restaurant? Or the new location? Incidentally, I haven't. Oh, because good for you. what's really crazy is every single person who worked for me at the previous location mm-hmm. wants to come back. Oh, wow. How yeah. cool is that? So I have a team, my whole back of the house team. So kudos has been for you. Home. They love working there with you. you. Yeah. Thanks. It's definitely um, humbling and heartwarming and sure. amazing. I love it. But my whole back of the house team has been waiting. Um, we have actually, they're coming back tomorrow. Oh, wow. I'm that's super cool. excited about it. Yeah. I sent them a text this morning. They're super excited. Um, and, you know, the front of the house team, I originally thought that I would lose most of them just because a lot of them were graduating from school, you know, serving jobs are easy to come by. You can find them anywhere you go. Um, but over the course of the last few weeks, I've gotten a message from each and every one of them. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah. Right. Good for you. So something you don't have to deal with. That's, that's mind boggling. So compare, give me the menu, like from where you were at Mm -hmm. to the new one, pretty similar. Yep. We're going to keep almost everything. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to pull, probably pull back a little bit, tweak a few things, but generally speaking, you're going to see all the same favorites. Sure. Um, Full pastry case, full breakfast menu, lunch menu. Um, We're going to be pulling back on the dinner component and just doing a happy hour. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to be open until seven, at least a few days a week, because we're going to have a full liquor license. Sure. What we want is that community of people that we're going to be servicing on that corner to finish up the workday, come on down, have a cocktail, Cocktail, maybe grab dinner to go. Right. And then, um, yeah, just be kind of a chill vibe space. So cool. That's fantastic. So running a restaurant, just like any other small business, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked to a lot of small businesses. What do you find? I mean, obviously we know your superpower is building (laughs) community and staffing, right? But so what is, what's the stuff that you struggle with on a daily basis? I mean, what makes you not want to come to work some days? For sure. I totally, um, absolutely. I think that something that I'm working on is um, something called imposter syndrome, Mm -hmm. right? Like, because I haven't had the experience that a lot of other restaurateurs have had working in the industry, sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, Yeah. right? Like, I come in and I'm like, I am just not, this is just not who I am. I've built the foundation of something that isn't, doesn't, is like goes against the grain. Sure, totally. But then I have to kind of take a step back and I've been working on this pretty aggressively that going against the grain isn't bad. Yeah, no, right. It just means yeah. that you're you're creating a new path, mm-hmm. you're driving in a new wedge that, you know, might hopefully set examples for future people coming into the industry. Right? Yeah. And I mean, you've got to be doing something right, right? Because yeah. I mean, what what's the average length of a restaurant? I, I know. Mean, it's got to be a couple of years, yeah. maybe three, Absolutely. something like that. Absolutely. And I think honestly, having these kind of moves that have happened over the yeah. course of the cap, um, past couple of years have given me opportunity to reinvent myself and re-up sure. and really 
hone in on the things that I'm good at, throw away the things I'm bad at totally. and just kind of keep moving forward. So what was the, what was the hunt like for the new space? So like your old space is done, you know, yeah. that's history. Yeah. You're looking for something yeah. new. How does that yeah. go down? Oh my God. The story <laughs> is crazy. I, I feel like I need to write a book about it. Honestly, it was a massive struggle. Really? I mean, I spent a lot of nights crying. Yeah. I spent a lot of nights awake, worrying, um, just not knowing what was going to happen. And literally, I don't know what the term is in sports, but like the final moment, the final stretch, sure. the last 30 seconds, <laughs> whatever it is, totally. it literally happened two weeks before we closed our previous location. Oh, wow. Okay. Where the, the, the uh, owners and the leasing director of the Biltmore Center came to me. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. And they said that we want Chestnut in right. this space. We want it to be an amenity for this community. We sure. want it to be an amenity for the neighborhood. And we think that you are exactly. Oh, that's fantastic. And I that's remember cool. having a meeting with Danny, who's the leasing director there. And he looked at me and he said, you manifested this. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, whoa, that just hit me like square in the heart right. because I had been trying to manifest it sure. for like a long time. Yeah, for sure. totally. That is pumped. killer. Yeah. So the new location in the Biltmore, what, why? I mean, why the Biltmore area? It's just a good fit oh for you? You gosh, felt it's like killer? The Biltmore is a dream, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And to be honest with you, as a restaurant, you don't go into the Biltmore as like a mom and pop. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, there are yeah. no mom and pops. I mean, you've I know, got crazy, Cheesecake right? Factory, yeah. CPK, you know, well, so let's all talk about Cheesecake about, Factory, oh, that yeah. menu. I mean, come on now. It's like, how can how I can, make, It's I a novel. I literally don't understand how they operate. I know, I right? Like, it's like, oh my gosh. Do have like 18 cooks back yeah. there? There's it's so many It's a good cheesecake, you know? Oh, yeah. But when I go oh, in there, yeah. it's like, how could you do, do 700 you, things I know. And it's so funny because whenever my kids actually love Cheesecake Factory, they're just like the chicken tenders is their jam. there you go. Yeah, and I go back and I get the same, you know, that's just who I am. I'm yeah. habitually, I go back and I yeah. get the same exact thing every time I go. But yeah, the Biltmore is definitely a place that like mom and pops don't go in. So when they came to me and they were like, hey, listen, we want you. I was like, what? Yeah, that's you great. You want me? Right. Oh, like, yes. What? Yeah. What do I do? Where do I sign? Like, how <laughs> do I get this going? I love yeah. it. So tell us a little bit about the journey coming from Illinois. Mm -hmm. how, how do you end up in Arizona? Oh my gosh. Um, so my sister was living here at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had graduated. I went to university of Illinois, I graduated and I was like, what am I going to do? Sure. I had a job lined up in Chicago. I always thought I was a Midwest girl. Mm -hmm. I'd never come out here. I was always planning on going back. I was like, Oh, I'll go out to Arizona yeah, for a hang couple out years, for a little bit. go back. You so know, I'm from the Midwest whatever. too, but it, yeah. I think that happens to you. I'm from Detroit. Yeah. So uh, yeah, big difference between going back to Chicago totally. and going back to Detroit. But, but I mean, you get here and then you're like, ah, oh, I'm not going Absolutely. <laughs> I had actually never even really been to Arizona. Yeah. Right. So I didn't, I was like the desert. Who right. wants to live in the desert? But uh, it's a dry heat. It is a dry <laughs> And it's, it, the thing is, is it's beautiful yeah. nine months out of the year. Yeah. And it's Holy. stunning. And I'm an active person. I obviously swam in college. Mm -hmm. So being able to swim in the sun, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I swam in a, what is it, natatorium right. inside yeah. for all of my life. Yeah. I would leave and my hair would freeze. Yeah, it's you know, crazy, going to the right? bar. So like being in the sun, getting a tan, doing the things that I love. Sure. I mean, like there's like no question why I know, I right? Do you go back still? Or are I you do. like family and friends? So are? my my family lives here. My husband's family lives in Chicago. So we okay. go back every year. Um, and it's just it's definitely a culture shock. Yeah. You know, I yeah. I never think that I've changed very much, right? right? Until I go back and I'm like, whoa, this is so crazy. what's the big change? Because I like my brother and my son both live in Chicago right yeah, now. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like the pace is way different. Pace is different. You know? Lifestyle is different. Yeah. I mean, like, I I think that Arizona is a very active state, yeah. right? Hiking, walking, biking, yeah, any It's of crazy, right? Because even when it's 118, yeah. like you go out in the morning. Absolutely. And there's all these people out walking Everywhere. around and doing stuff. It's Up crazy. Up and down the canal, on yeah. the mountains, all the stuff. And then I just don't think that that's an, like really instilled in you in the Midwest, yeah. Let's right? Let's head down and get yeah, there, you know? Absolutely. Kind of and one of the whatever. biggest things was when I moved out here, I would put on a suit, a suit, right? Oh, yeah. Like a pantsuit to go get an interview. <laughs> and I remember for my very first job, I went in for the interview and the guy was in a Hawaiian shirt yeah. and I was like in a button up and I'm like, this is awkward. <laughs> I love <laughs> just it. Just kind so of a true. change. Just got to shift the mind a little so bit. So Chicago killer food scene though, right? So oh I mean, gosh, any inspiration yeah. from that? Have you, have you um, sampled that a little bit? I, what's funny is I have it. There's obviously I've been, I've, eaten a lot of variety of different places. Sure. But I also would say that, yes, the food scene is great, but it's definitely richer too. Yeah. It's very yeah. Midwest, butter, cream, all oh, that yeah, kind of heavy. stuff, which is super great. But it's just a different, uh, just a different shift. I actually get a lot of our inspiration from LA. Sure. 
Yeah, because that I think that L, like Phoenix, they say, is the little LA all yeah, the yeah. time. Like people from California, the food are scene especially totally. for sure. Yeah. So a lot of the places like um, Jones on Third, Huckleberry, mm-hmm. um, Justo, like yeah, a yeah. lot of places in LA that just give you fresh, you know, um, veggies mm-hmm. and fresh produce and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a sure. taco place in Huntington Beach that's mm-hmm. like. Uh, can't think of the name of the place, whatever, but they need to come here if you guys oh, are watching. Come on. Yeah. We need yeah. to do that. <laughs> Excuse me a little bit. So tell me a little bit more about what, are you, I mean, are you excited? You ramped up? What are you guys doing to get ready? Because it's coming up in, I know. what, two months, right? Oh, my God. So I have got people working on all of the construction, although we're yeah. really just revamping the front of the house. So right? was it a restaurant before? It was a restaurant okay. before. Um, the color scheme is very aggressive. So sure. we're Definitely going to be painting some walls, right. toning it down a little bit, getting the counters redone, putting in our iconic pastry case. Um, I actually want to revamp the sign from the original location, 44th and Camelback. I don't oh, know if you cool. remember, yeah. but it was wood and it was huge and it's yeah, like yeah. chestnut right on the corner. I still have it. Oh, that's cool. So I'm hoping to remodel it or refinish it and bring it out um, and have that in our space as well. But the kitchen's already set. So I was saying um, we had a deep clean in there. They're finishing up. My team is coming in tomorrow. We're going to be stocking the kitchen, getting it going. So, cool. so as l- soon as the front of the house is ready to go, we're going to be hitting the ground running. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I, a lot of restaurateurs, a lot of people in the industry, especially, mm-hmm. I mean, that can be like an 80 hour a week thing, right? So, I mean, mm-hmm. how do you balance yeah. life? You know, obviously you're married. Yeah. I mean, how do you balance that life with just the demands of a place that's always on totally. the go? You totally. Know? It is a ton of work and I lean into my community Sure. beyond just obviously my community as a business, but my personal community. I have friends, I have family, people who grab my kids, take right. them where they need to go. Um, but I do try to show up, right? Sure. Like I I was six months pregnant with my second daughter um, when we opened 10 yeah, years ago, crazy, right? So right? I've got a 12-year-old and a nine-year-old and you they're know, pretty they're, familiar with the restaurant. Oh my god, it's so funny because when we when we originally um, moved, when we were when we announced that we were moving, my kids they haven't known me mm-hmm. at all yeah. as not having a restaurant, right? right? So having the last what was like four months not having a space. What are you doing really, at home, mom? I know. <laughs> what are you it's doing so here? funny. They're like, what's happening? So they're like, my daughter is like, I can't wait till we reopen. I want to do it. You know, she yeah. wants to take over the restaurant when she's older, cool which is, is so that crazy. Is so cool. It's so fun to have that kind of mentality. Um, and they want to work in the space and their cousins want to work in the space. But I do, I do try to prioritize being a mom. Like I always drop them off for school at eight o'clock in the morning. And then I just make sure that my team is there ready to open. And that's the other thing, having a really good familiar relationship with my team so that they know that I'm counting on them because I need to show up for my family and they need to show up for theirs in the way that they need to. So I think having that relationship and that back and forth gives me the opportunity to kind of be flexible. Yeah. Good for you. Because that's a really hard balance, right? Oh, it absolutely I see that in my life. Absolutely. I'm a little lucky my kids are older, but I mean, it's tough. It's hard for sure. It is tough. So, I mean, what would you say about the food scene right now going in the Valley? Because I mean, I feel like seven or eight years ago, it was kind of a little blase. Absolutely. But it seems to be just blowing up right now. It is blowing up. I cannot even keep up. People are like, have you been here? And I was like, I haven't even heard of it. Where is that? Where did I go? It's crazy, right? I mean, just things. I went, I've been to Bacanora. I've been Mm -hmm. to Laibon. I've been to, what is the new place downtown? These places and the the cocktails. Yeah. I mean, but Literally. has that game ele- oh. elevated or oh, what? Oh, God, That's it's just nuts. insane. I mean, I think, what is it? Barter and Shake that has um, Century Grand just yeah, yeah, won yeah. the best best um in bar country. in the country. Yeah, I know. It's, it's crazy. so phenomenal to be in the fifth largest. And then that's the other thing is it's like, you know, when we were talking about imposter syndrome and yeah. not knowing... I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. People will say to me, you are in the fifth largest yeah, city you're in killing the country. It. And you got 10 years and under the belt. 10 yeah. years. That's amazing. Yeah, you're totally. not an imposter. Right. Right. 100%. So it's just a matter of, of recognizing where we are, who sure. we are, what we're doing and how amazing that scene is. Like yeah. You said. And it, I mean, it's so fun right now because it, I mean, like I was talking to somebody yesterday, culinary gangster in Scottsdale. Yeah. I'm not giving him a pitch or anything, yeah, but yeah. you know, really good guy. And yeah. he's, he's a Chicago guy. Yeah. I had no idea if it was even there, oh, you know, wow. and it's like the places are blowing. Up. I it's know. Insane. And they just keep popping up and, keep, and they're yep. just elevating it more and more. I mean, Vecina was nominated for a James Beard. Yeah. And I'm just like, I've been there. I, and they are, by the way, amazing humans. Mm-hmm. They let me go in their kitchen. They are working out of the so tiniest would, would that space. be That'd be like one of the only James Beard chefs in the Valley, right? Or James Beard restaurants? I yeah. Think. I don't think they've actually got one okay. yet, but but I but definitely nominated and yeah. one of the few that have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is not a James Beard in Phoenix yet. Well, so what? Or, uh, or is it Michelin? I Either. think there's not a Michelin, right? Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, no Michelin. No We're Michelin. looking off the side. Hey, Nicole, what's going on? We'll throw you in. Yeah, oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are the data points? Know, right? <laughs> what's going on? I, know. I actually don't bit? know. I should know these things. I so, but I, I think our guy in Old Town here um, used to be up in Cave Creek area. Okay. And I think, he, I don't know if he's a James Beard winner or a Michelin winner or whatever, but really good restaurant too. Wow. But so Chestnut with 10 years behind you, coming into a new location, it's got to be really super exciting. Yeah. But do you still, I mean, are you still worried? Like, do you still oh. get up and think, oh, yeah. is anybody going to show up? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's just the way the industry is. It's like you're hot a second, cold a second. Yeah. So like, you know, you could be super popular or not. And I think the biggest thing for me is I just, again, I hate to go kind of be a, a, yeah. a broken record, but I lean into the community, yeah, right? Like when we announced that um, we were departing, I, you know, the the response was aggressive, right? And yeah. in a great way, in a great way, sad, sad. What are you doing? Like Why? Said, yeah, exactly. Totally. And then when we, you know, two months later announced where we were moving to, I was overwhelmed sure. by the support and the response. I was so like, cool. I cannot believe all of you care, yeah, right? Totally. Like, so cool. it's so amazing. So I think that when you put your heart in it, into it and your passion into it and, and your, all of your being in the most authentic way, that you really do connect with the community sure. and then they really show up for you in such a sure. strong way. Totally. Yeah. So what's, give me the process of like, okay, so you're going to open up a new location. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do a soft opening, a, a hard grand opening, yeah. you just kind of yeah. inch into it, or do you just go full bore and turn up, open the doors and let's go? So I've done it all different ways. Yeah, the yeah. first time we did it, we opened hard. Yeah. And that was not a great, oh, yeah, not yeah, yeah. the best. Okay, right. <laughs> That was like, especially when we were 10 years ago, when you said the food scene was completely different, yeah. like the, the city was wanting it. It just wasn't yeah, there yeah. yet. Yeah, exactly. And we missed the mark. <laughs> like, we, like, I was like, I was like uh, so, I mean, the community was really forgiving and they, sure. and they gave us time to kind of grow into it. But, um, but yeah, definitely missed the, but the second time I learned my lesson and we slow rolled it, right? right. Slow. So we did a soft opening into a hard yeah, yeah, opening, totally. which was better. Um, the only problem there was that six weeks after we opened COVID shut everything down. So That's that was kind nice. of a, yeah, you know, right. kind of a tricky situation. Did you keep going carry out kind of business? How'd you adapt so to that? So COVID was a real, it's COVID's its own story for yeah. us, but it was, um, such an amazing story. We we did close. We went straight into home deliveries, mm -hmm. straight into pickups, straight into into actually. We ended up taking on donor money and donating fifteen thousand meals in the course of eleven weeks. Wow! Yeah, where the money was only made only for paying the team, paying for the food, right. and that's it. Yeah. So um, I donated all my time, my energy, sure. my you know passion, which but by the way kept people employed, happy, kept people working to do it right. Yeah. And I was the one who was delivering those meals across the valley. People saw me yeah, in my little Highlander so cool. driving around like, beep, beep. <laughs> but, um, but that's, you know, kind of how we survived COVID for sure. But with this new space, um, definitely going to be slow rolling. We're going to yeah. do a soft opening family and friends only. And then we'll probably just invite our community of people in the Biltmore Center. And then we'll open to the public. Then go with the whole, great. the whole show, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about it. Tell us like your your handles, your Instagram, your Facebook oh, yeah, website, sure. all that kind of cool Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Everything's pretty easy. It's all chess, at Chestnut AZ, mm -hmm. as in Arizona, C-H-E-S-T-N-U-T, AZ. <laughs> um, that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Right. Um, and our email address is eat at chestnutaz.com. Ah, I love it. It's perfect. And um, really easy to get a hold of us there. So yeah, all the contacts. Cool. So where does Chestnut come from? So interestingly enough, Chestnut was an existing concept that was next to Havana Cafe on 44th and Camelback, where, where Buck and Ryder is now. Okay. Many, many, many years yeah, yeah. ago, owned by a woman named Polly Levine. Right. Really cute cafe, very small menu, coffee, pastries, very kind of California, Southern, SoCal vibes. And my sister and I were patrons of that space for a long time. She was sure. there for about 18 months, maybe a little bit more. And, um, which she, is sad, right? I mean, that's yeah, just the whole thing, yeah. you know, how it goes, but it was more of a situation where it was a passion that she loved to do, but, but it wasn't necessarily like, um, something she had to do. Yeah, right. Totally. And so when she closed up shop, my sister approached her and said, Hey, listen, like, I love your concept. I love what you're doing. I would love to take this over. Sure. So, um, we ended up buying the concept from her and then reopening it on 44th and Camelback, really taking it from like here to here. Like yeah. We expanded the menu. We did all the things. Like it really, I mean, she was really functioning out of 1200 square, like, no, 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 700 square feet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So we, Dine in? yeah. Uh, yeah. But the cafe was like oh, tiny. Gotcha. It yeah. probably had like 10 total seats. Right. So it was really an interesting, um, 
share transformation for right. sure. Yeah. And, and just up. like dang, taking it from what, so that's when I say, like, I really thought we were going to do this tiny little cafe. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. really what I thought. Well, that's your sister's like, look exactly. at this little She's thing. Like, yeah, like, oh, I know. <laughs> so it really turned into something much larger yeah. and in, in the best possible way. Right. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, that's where Chestnut came from is the original concept. So cool. Yeah. So this is a hard one, right? Because mm-hmm. you're a restaurant tour outside of Chestnut, which mm-hmm. obviously you love, and that's where you want to yeah. be. Favorite restaurants? I'll give you two. Oh my! Because I know one's impossible, but you got to give us two. That's like your favorite place to go. So a place that we that my family and I go uh-huh. to very regularly um, is Chelsea's Kitchen. Oh yeah, yeah, I love and Chelsea's it's iconic. Kitchen, yeah. It's been here for a very long time. Yep. It's right around the corner from our house. Our kids love their chicken strip meal yeah. and their their French fries. Yeah, oh my yeah. god, their seasoned yeah. fries! I could just eat those all day long. Yeah. So and then their key line. What's going on with their seasoning? It's it's like it's almost like the McDonald's factor. I know something in there. And then their key line. Illegal. (laughs) I can literally cannot leave the place without getting a slice of key lime pie. So um, it's a very comfortable place too. I can go and dress up slightly, or I can go in my sweats, and they really don't care. Yeah. yeah, And so it's a very kind of what I call a neighborhood family friendly space. So that's one of our favorites. And then um, I have I actually just recently went, and a very close family friend of mine owns the space, but. It's um, Clever Koi. Oh, no oh, idea. Is so it sushi place? Good. Well, so he owns, um, he has a partner, but he owns like Clever Koi. And then they also have Across the Pond, which is a sushi place mm-hmm. across the street from that, or just across the hall from their other location. They also have Clever Ramen, which is oh, their wow. fast okay. casual ramen place. And they also own Fellow, which is their Italian concept. Okay. But Clever Koi is such a fun fusion of Asian flavors. Sure, sure. And I am Asian. So being able to go, I'm half Chinese, my mom's Chinese. So being able to go and try all these different things with like kind of that Valley twist to it is yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. So can you tell us one thing that you want to bring on your menu that's not there yet? Do you have something in mind? Like oh you're like, oh my, my God, I had that. And I really want to do that. Let me think. That's a, that's really a hard question. Hard right? I mean, acai, <laughs> like I love yeah. acai bowls. I love how fresh they are. I love fresh fruit. Yeah. I'm really into simplicity of things. Sure. Like one of my favorite items on the menu is called the bibimbap bowl. And it's literally just kale and quinoa. Oh, wow. Eggs. So cool. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is that people love it and they can never remake it. Right. You know, they're always yeah. like, I can't do it at home. And I'm like, it's only four ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I love this because if you use quality ingredients, quality produce, um, and all the, all the things are yeah. great and fresh, then this the minimalistic kind of like plate is going to speak volumes. Totally. So when it comes to like, I I mean, when I say acai, I know it's so simple and so basic, but like it's so fresh and so yummy. And I love fresh fruit and something that's healthy. I don't know. I'm just, I'm in this health mode of my life. My I kids are 12 and nine. I'm like, optimize yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. So I, I could probably ramble forever yeah. with you, but I'll throw just a couple more at you, sure. right? Because I really yeah. love the restaurant business. So you, you're you talking about fresh and you're mm-hmm. talking about, you know, really fresh ingredients, you know, probably some table to farm organic stuff, yeah, that whole yeah, thing. Yeah. What does that look like as the owner, as the mm-hmm. person? I mean, I'm sure you got staff that helps you order and everything yeah, else, yeah. but I mean, how do you get, how do you do that? Because I mean, it's so it, yeah. important that it is good and it is fresh. Absolutely. I mean, is that, do you go through a lot of vendors on that situation or how does that work? Absolutely. You have to find the right vendors. Number yeah. one, we have a number of different vendors. Um, I personally, again, when we talk about going against the grain, mm-hmm. I, f- I flex a lot in terms of my budget. Sure. Like I am willing to allow the percentage of food costs to be higher right. because I don't want to compromise. Sure. Right. Sure. And I have the flexibility to do that. Um, when I know a lot of other people, places don't. Um, but I just am not willing. So like sometimes, you know, this is kind of a lot number, number wise, but like a lot of restaurants want to be under 30% food cost, yeah. um, sometimes closer to 20 or 25%. But then it's also just a generic number thrown at the wall, right? right I mean, right. it's like, come exactly, on, you know, yeah. but I mean, it, when you talk, well, like really what you're talking about is there's a lot of math factors and equations and um, all these things that happen in the back to make it yeah. work. And it is very like, there's all these programs and stuff to like totally. make sure. But my number really lies closer to 45 or I'm so sorry, 35 to 38%, okay. which really that five to 8% is huge. Sure. But I'm just like, I would much rather make sure that what I'm using is good quality than, than compromise it to, to tighten up my budget. And, and, and I don't, and I don't mean to like, you know, to each their no, no, own, no, totally get yeah, it. yeah, to 100%. each their own in their, in their business, but you can see it, right? Yeah. Like I, I, and I've been all over the Valley in the last four months trying breakfast everywhere because mm-hmm. it's all about R and D and I can tell. Yeah. Right. And, and there is, I, but when we closed, I was like, there are so many breakfast places all over. Why, yeah. who would miss chestnut? Honestly, who would miss it? Sure. 
I miss it. Yeah. I miss it. My, my clients miss it. My community misses it. Like there are things that we provide that there is a niche market for it that people want and they, and they demand it. So, yeah. So I'm going to throw one last thing at you and this is a tough one. Yeah. And I just went through this as a business owner. So I got a negative review from somebody I don't know. (laughs) I've never heard of, I've never talked to, I've never met. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, thankfully knock on wood, Google was cool about it and I had to go through the process, but got it removed. Right. But I mean, I, I feel like on restaurants, it's just totally not fair in today's market Mm -hmm. that anybody can just go out there and blast people Mm -hmm. for no reason, no proof, nothing, you know? So, I mean, have you had that happen and how do you deal with it? Or, I mean, what, you know, it it would make me so mad personally, but I mean. So there's a few, a few notes that I want to make here because I (laughs) I find this topic to be fascinating, but one, um, especially with businesses like mine, where you, where the owner is somebody who's actively in that space, I take every review personally. Sure. I really do. I probably interacted with you. Right. If you're complaining, you're probably complaining about me. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you're obviously complaining about me because you're complaining about Chestnut and Chestnut is me. Yeah. Right. And um, I I contact every single one of them. I try to give them an option to come back. A lot of the time it's because they were in a bad mood or they were having a bad day day. or something happened. Right. right? Or that's just something is in them that they they feel compelled to do those two say those types of things or do those types of things. And that's understandable. And, and then sometimes they're right. Yeah. Sometimes we did miss the mark. Sometimes we, we had a bad day. Sometimes our, you know, team had a bad day and that they had an attitude or whatever. And you have to like kind of sift through it and say, listen, you're absolutely right. And that's something that we're going to work on. Yeah. But I will say that I have this app idea and I've been thinking about it, it for a long time. <laughs> Here we go. And business number two. I know if somebody wants to steal it and take it or whatever, because I don't actually think I have the time to do it. But I've thought about um, building an app that's actually the, re- the reverse of Yelp. And you get to review the people yeah. that come in. And it would be called like, <laughs> yeah. it would be called like Play, P-L-E-Y, yeah. right? Sure. Which is the reverse of Yelp. And um, the people who can sign up as people who rate others are right. those that hold food handlers cards, right? Oh, that's so cool. chefs servers, that kind of thing. So people in the industry. Right. But yeah. the benefit is, is that you're rated. And as you get rated and your rate goes up or your, or your stars go up or your points go up, you get priority seating, mm-hmm. you get reservation priority, you get discounts. So this is a freaking get, killer, exactly. killer. Are we recording this? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like a combination of Yelp and um, what's the booking, the reservation. Oh, app. open, open, open table. table. Yeah. yeah. Kind yeah. of a combination. Which so I have that, a personal issue with open totally. table. We'll figure that because out. Because servers really, you know, we're people. And we want to service, uh, you know, our community and we want to make sure that you have a great time. And, but sometimes it's a give and take, yeah. right? It's a little 100%. bit back and forth. Well, it's just so frustrating, right? Cause I'll see people like you could go to McDonald's a 500 times yeah. and 300 times it sucks, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and absolutely. nobody's out there blasting McDonald's, I know. you know, but you yeah. go into you know, a local restaurant with a local mm-hmm. owner, somebody part of the community yeah. that's just busting it to make yeah. every, make it as good as yeah. possible. And you're going to light them up when you've been in there one time because yeah. the water was five yeah. minutes. It's like, give me a break. But man. I will say as much as that one person is going to do that, yeah. there are 20 people who are willing to go yeah, yeah. and like Absolutely. spread Which the word fantastic. outside of the platform, yep. right? Totally. Tell their friends, I went here and we need to go back. Yep. It's so amazing. Yep. I think that sometimes the negative reviews it's all you can focus on. Yeah. I mean, that's how I am, yeah. right? Like, I'm just like, I, I distinctly remember reviews from the from the month we opened yeah, in right. 2013 that I could probably recite verbatim. <laughs> yeah, they just right? ate at you, and, right? And yeah. reviews that have happened, like I could literally dozens that I could just pull off the top of my head that are negative. But what positive review could I pull off the top of my head? Yeah, right. You know? crazy. But I will say that I do, I do love the support from the community, no matter cool. what. For sure. One, one final question. I yeah. swear to gosh, yeah, 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 that no, one, but, uh, ask all the questions. So, um, t- you've been in the business 10 years now, mm-hmm. right? So 10 years ago, I would think like Instagram, TikTok, yeah, Facebook a little bit, but that kind of stuff wasn't really a driving factor, mm-hmm. but social media now seems to be really important for the restaurant mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. So, or maybe it is, I don't mm-hmm. really know, but I mean, yeah. how do you guys approach it? And is it something like you game plan for? Is it part of your, 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 you know, the way you run your business? Absolutely. You got to budget it in. Yeah. 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 I use um, a social media marketing company. Sure. Um, Regina Lawrence mm-hmm. it is the owner. And um, I actually, what's so, so funny is I work so closely with her. I actually don't remember the name of her social media company. Yeah. We'll but find it out. We'll was, it I know. Out. It's so funny yeah. because she's like, she's fantastic. She mm-hmm. has a whole business um, surrounded around, you know, supporting small businesses and their social sure. media. It's a task. It's a huge task. Right. And what's really great about this particular marketing team is that I work closely with them. We produce content together. We go over how that's going to be um, presented to the community right. and to the masses. And um, we 
have expanded into TikTok, which yeah. is new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but is mandatory at this point. Yep. So, I mean, it's all the things. It's a combination, right? You've got your e-blast. You've got your daily posts. You've got sure. your reels. You've got your stories. You've got your TikToks. Yeah, you've yeah, got your Twitter. Nuts, right? I mean, there's just so many. Yeah. But it is. It's it's a part of our new age life. And, and you just got to embrace it. Yeah. You know what? It's it's interesting because I really wish there was some way to kind of measure an ROI on that, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's really hard. Yeah. I mean, you get likes and you get whatever, yeah, sure. but could you relate that to like people sitting down and paying a bill, you know? So what's interesting is we there is something that you can kind of do that with. And it's some, uh-huh. something that we've implemented and we intend on implementing again as we move is, a, is, is another business called um, Restaurant Marketing That Works. It's okay. based out of, I think, Tennessee or Kentucky. Um, but it takes posts and it um, kind of prompts people to uh, sign up, right? So the biggest thing in regards to marketing for any business, whether it's, you know, a restaurant or a retail store is to obtain a person's data, right? Email address, phone number, Mm -hmm. demographic, that kind of stuff. So this platform or this program integrates into the Instagram or TikTok platform searches or seeks out or so for instance if somebody likes my post it'll mm-hmm. send an auto message that says oh, sign cool. up for our so VIP. it's kind of surveying them Absolutely. kind of thing and then it takes all that information and it inputs it so that we know who we're serving how we're serving them and i know that sometimes people that? can people can get annoyed by that in a way sure. like oh you have all my information but i'm like how better am i to serve you right yeah than without that but in fairness right? everybody has everybody's Absolutely. information at this point it's Absolutely. all over the place oh my god cool. yeah so guys that's curse and steel with chestnut <laughs> One more time, give us all the all the tags and yeah, hashtags yeah. and so websites. Super, super easy. At Chestnut AZ, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, um, eat at chestnutaz.com is our email address. Our website is chestnutaz.com. It's super, super easy. Chestnut AZ across the board. Cool. So, and again, I'm Kirsten, so you can find me there. October. Thank you so much, Kirsten. Appreciate Perfect. it. Thanks, guys. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you again soon.